Right. So welcome everyone to uh, Unleash Your Free Spirit. And thanks for participating in our uh, introductory exercise. It's so great to spend some time with each of you and just find out a little bit more about you and to learn from one, one another. And I think that's one of the best things that we do in this organization is uh, the education, the learning, the connection with each other. And one of the things we want to remind everybody is we do this once a month for an hour, but that's not the beginning or the end of this group. So we really want you to connect throughout the month. And that means that um, if you want to put your information in the chat uh, where people can get hold of you so that you can continue our our conversations and you can learn more about each other, maybe get some business from each other or some tips or um, uh, a lead to something further. So please feel free to put your information in the chat. We really want you to share that. We are so happy to have a guest speaker today that is um, he's absolutely phenomenal. Um, I met Jim, oh gosh, Jim, I don't even know, three, four, five months ago, uh, something like that, um, on LinkedIn, where uh, we tend to meet a lot of uh, the people when we're not networking face-to-face, -face, as many of us don't do as often. And James is a phenomenal speaker. He is an author. He wrote a book called Chaos. And I have not read it yet, Jim, I must admit. I'm kind of afraid because, uh, you know, there's a lot of chaos in my life. Um, and maybe there was some in yours, too. I don't know. I'd like to hear about that. But uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to get that, that book um, to, to see what, what kind of chaos you're talking about. Um, he actually founded an organization called Focus 31. And today his, um, his expertise is really about focus. And this is such a great time of, a, of the year for us to talk about focus. It's the end of our, uh, our calendar year. For many of us, it's the end of our fiscal year. And uh, we want to start setting those goals and doing things, but we can't succeed unless we have some great focus in both our business and our personal lives. And uh, he really is, is um, uh, adapt at accountability. And uh, as a, a former life coach, that was one of my biggest things was being accountable, not to someone that is coaching you, but being accountable to yourself. And uh, I, I just love how... James has actually created a protocol around accountability, and that that makes our lives move forward. And really, that's what we want to uh, be able to do every every day. And so, he, really, for business owners who who are unsure that they're facing stress and frustration, um, that that they're being guided by by putting fires out. Has any of you done that? You get to the end of your day and you go, "Oh my gosh." I'll, all I did today was put off fires. I didn't do anything on my, my list. Um, at people that really need more, more clearly defined strategies, James is the person to talk to. And I am so happy to have him uh, speak to us today about his story, his journey, and, uh, and maybe a, 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 a nod or two towards some little things that we can do to... Um, to really make our lives run smoother. So without further ado, James, I would like to introduce you. The floor is yours. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to all of you wherever you are in the world in this networking group. It's an absolute pleasure of mine to be with you today and to be new business friends of Guinea and Judy. It's it's. And by the way, I only did that alphabetically, okay? I'm not putting one of you out ahead of the other, strictly this time. <laughs> I think later on I say Judy and Guinea. So uh, again, thanks so much for having me here today. Uh, am I side of a head cold? So I could potentially sound just a wee bit funny today. Um, and hopefully not. It, it doesn't seem too bad. Um, to be honest, I, <laughs> you know, there's nothing worse than hearing people introduce you 
um, and wondering, are you really going to hit it out of the park the way they hope you will? But I mean, I'm absolutely terrified right now um, because, uh, you know, it's December 7th and Guinea and Judy have kind of challenged me to motivate all of you into magnificent work for 2023. Oh, gee, that's no big challenge whatsoever. Uh, the second thing is I have no slides and I never work without slides when I'm speaking. So I'm a feeling a bit naked here, if you will. Um, thirdly, you're gonna hear from me today for the first time ever. And I mean like lots of speakers say this, I'm being serious. I have never talked about this topic ever before. And I'm nervous uh, that it may not land with you. I certainly hope it will. I think pretty quite certain it will. And there's always the risk it won't because it's being tested with all of you. Uh, the the topic that I or the the ideas I'm going to share with you uh, come under the banner of the Lucid Strategy for Success. Lucid, L-U-S-I-D, and that's an acronym. And I will share the acronym in just a few moments. And like those three things aren't reason enough. There's a fourth reason I'm nervous. I'm sure, you've all noticed when you get in front of a speaker, you hear a speaker. They all start with a story of huge loss, near-death experiences or encounters with police and jail before they uh, find their strength to redefine themselves. Do you know why they do that? Anybody want to offer up why they do that? Well, they do it to draw you into the power of their success and them successful think how easy it will be for you if you haven't gone through this train wreck of a life that I've been through and yeah well that's just not me there is no unique story for James Burgess I grew up in Toronto in a middle-class family went to perfectly good schools had lots of friends went to the University of Toronto graduated with a double major in commerce and economics and started with one of Canada's largest banks in 1983 right out of university Perhaps the only unique thing about me that isn't all that unique is that I've been a type one diabetic since the age of nine when Armstrong landed on the moon. You can do the quick math there to figure out how old I am. Um, that diabetes likely contributed to the fact that I have short man syndrome because I'm five foot six and a half. And those two things combined have made me a rather competitive sort of a person, but politely as I am after all Canadian. And that's it. So if you're looking for my personal story to motivate you into 2023, you need to know I haven't climbed Everest, haven't swam Lake Ontario, haven't as periodically when I drive a touch too fast. I'm about as average a Joe as you can know. But I still think I have great, do you think so too? So let's all just be open for the moment to how you can get to greater success than you've ever considered possible in 2023 and beyond. And I'm speaking principally to the business owners uh, and your business as opposed to you personally, and yet how to apply the ideas I'm thinking here uh, in, a, in the parallel of your, of your personal life. But before we begin, we gotta get a foundation. And that foundation will come from some very, very, very old words. And they are, the greatest danger we all face is not that we aim too high and miss, but that we aim too low and achieve. Those are the words of Michelangelo. And here's the thing, as brilliant as old Mike was, he was dead wrong. You see, I've met with far more current day business owners than Michelangelo has or possibly can. He is, after all, gone. And uh, based on my experience with these business owners, the quote should read, the greatest danger we all face is not that we aim too high and miss, but that we aim too low and still miss. So I see my responsibility for today as being to enable you to connect with aiming high in 2023 by showing you how you can accomplish whatever you're aiming for that is high, and I mean truly high. And that's where our lucid model for success comes in. And before I describe the lucid strategy for success, let me uh, uh, share how we have consistently applied this model to our growth at Focus 31. Focus 31 was launched in 2006. I, your position with a successful Canadian retail banker as a successful banker, 
with the last 10 years dedicated to small business clients, responsible for a portfolio of three quarters of a billion dollars, 15,000 clients, uh, and 30 direct reports. And I left with the intention of launching a consulting practice dedicated, therefore, to small business. I believe that with my experience in operations management, people and performance management, sales management, business would be clamoring to work with me. And Focus 31 fell flat right out of the gate for several years thereafter. Yeah, sure, I had some clients. They paid me, not a lot. Uh, but between setting up my business and supporting my family, I was cashing out my severance, then my retirement savings, and then even managed to make my way partially through an inheritance from uh, the passing of my parents. It was ugly and emotionally painful because, well, remember how I said, I'm kind of competitive, right? So why did it start that way? I'm a smart guy. I'm, a, well, I think I'm kind of charming. Um, but I, re I came to realize you know, you know, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. That's kind of the definition of insanity. I had to stop the, the, the wheel. And I came to terms with the fact that what it was, was that as much as I had great skills to serve clients after I closed them, I didn't have any skills whatsoever to generate the leads and no skills to close them as prospects into clients because I had zero marketing skills. I need to have you hold on that point to emphasize just the story that you're about to hear. I had no marketing skills. So now let's fast forward to today, right now, December 7th. Whether it's myself or Focus 31, I'm an international best-selling author. We are global experts with business planning. We're trademarking our business planning system, the Focus Accountability System protocol for business planning, so nobody else can copy it. We have an, op hear this one. We have an operations support and marketing division in the Philippines under the responsibility of our operations manager, Ann Makatal. We are business and planning, so, sorry, business planning and marketing solutions providers. No marketing, and now we're providing marketing solutions and have a division in the Philippines. That happens to mean that we're doubling our revenues every year and we're ready to begin licensing our focus accountability system protocol to other small business coaches. How has all of that happened? And it's a great question. The solution was really unconscious. I didn't know we were doing it until I sat back last week and reflected on what I thought Guinea and Judy would want me to talk about today. And in that reflection, this model of success came clear to clear in my mind. And it was because of the uh, that Lucid um, ended up being a, a methodology I applied without knowing it every time we leveled up Focus 31 over the past 10 years. And so I'm thrilled, as I said, for the first time to be sharing this with you. But I'm still not ready to reveal it to you. You're just going to have to sit and wait. <laughs> That's the joy of being the speaker. I get to do it when I want to do it. Let's, so let's just recap for a second. We're going to aim high. That's all I've given you so far. All right. The next step in your success is fairly simple, and yet it requires some deep, deep thinking. And that is to define your legacy. What do you want to leave behind within your business? When I was hitting rock bottom with our results, that was the first thing that I turned to to begin pulling Focus 31 out of the dungeon and, uh, and, and kept me from taking a job, quite frankly, which my wife was certainly pressing me to do. My daughter's now 19. At the time my father passed away, she was only three. And I regretted that she did not get the time with her grandfather that her cousins got as they were all 10 years older than her. And I felt she missed out on some pretty cool experience with him. Where am I going with this? Well, one day I was driving in downtown Toronto and an epiphany came to me that all was not lost for Jamie to experience her grandfather because she could experience him through his legacy as a Toronto office tower builder. 
his legacy was in the skyline of Toronto. There are four buildings in the Toronto skyline that Jamie can connect with him through, three of which his company built, and the fourth, the tallest, the Bank of Nova Scotia Tower, he consulted to the chair of the Bank of Nova Scotia to make sure the tower actually went up properly. And that was my dad's last job before he retired. And I said to myself, how cool is this? How cool is it that Jamie can come and experience her grandfather here? And then it hit me like a freaking freight train. What would my legacy be? How could a failed entrepreneur leave a legacy except of disappointment, fear, and frustration? And with that, I proclaimed to myself right in the car as I was driving across, for any of you familiar with Toronto, driving across Bloor Street, took me until I got to Avenue Road. I proclaimed to myself that the legacy I would leave behind would be thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands more business owners made more successful by their interaction with me or my company, Focus 31. And then I went on to create an image to install that legacy in my mind. The images of Jamie walking along the Champs-Élysées in Paris, and a woman walks up to her. Her name is Maria. Yes, I gave her a name to just make it that much re more real for me. And she says to Jamie, pardon me, you look familiar to me. Uh, is, is your father James Burgess? Jamie, of course, answers yes. And Maria goes on to say that she owed her business a success to having encountered me or Focus 31. How she worked with us wasn't important to the legacy. It was just that she had. I firmly believe working on that legacy was the launch of the turnaround at Focus 31. So if you don't understand or don't have a well-defined legacy statement for yourself and your business, do it now. Do it next before anything else. As you aim high, this should be in concert with the idea, aim high, and in that aiming high, think about what your legacy can then be and then begin to live your life towards it. Okay, with those two foundational pieces, let's get to the lucid moments. LUSID, four steps to up-level your businesses in 2023. LU, step one, just look up. S, swipe. I, improve. D, deploy. Look up means look up and observe what businesses uh, that are bigger, more successful than you are doing, and with what? And ask, why is it resonating with you? What is their UVP, their value, unique value proposition? And what's drawing you into it? Then it's a fairly simple matter of swipe it. Swipe the idea and bring it into your business plan with the intention to improve it, make it better, make it yours by adding your unique value proposition to it and then deploy the idea out into the market as yours, earning new revenues from it. And of course, then ask yourself, what's next? And go again. As evidence of how Luce had works has worked for us in five instances um, where we leveled up as a result of leveraging this kind of thinking. Uh, the first experience, when, when I started out, having got my legacy organized, I then needed to, uh, as a generalist consultant, I needed, I was being beaten down uh, because every, all the business owners I was meeting with wanted specialists. So I had to go find a specialty. And so I looked up and there was Jim Haran and the one page business plan company out of Berkeley, California. It was a fairly unique idea that would resonate with my clients. No more 10, 20, or even 50 page business plans that never even got finished for heaven's sakes. And with that, I paid to become an affiliate of the One Page Business Plan Company and became Canada's number one affiliate for them. Okay, but that's only getting us to the point of I looked up. What did I do to swipe, improve, and deploy it? Well, after two years as an affiliate, I was really getting pretty damn tired of being known as the One Page Business Plan guy. I couldn't build the Focus 31 brand if I was being introduced by another company's brand identity. So I swiped the one page business plan idea and we made it massively improved by making it even easier and faster to create brilliant business plans. And I put it on our client engagement platform. Then we added our secret sauce that Judy has already talked about. And the secret sauce is what 
uh, that makes our business planning unique, the, the focus accountability system protocol unique, is that uh, we added the accountability, the accountability to actually fulfill the business plan. And it, by implementing it week after week after week, rather than just leaving it sitting in a credenza or on, in a computer file where it's completely useless and a waste of time. The focus accountability system protocol, unlike the one-page business plan, creates a synergy between you, your, you, you, the business owner, your business, and your business plan. And if you think of three intersecting circles, where all three circles intersect, that's where your business dream resides. And the business plan has to be there to keep the structure of that tight focus on where the dream will come. And so by looking up, swiping, improving, and deploying the Focus Accountability System protocol was born as a global offer. And we had our unique value proposition through a niche service. The second instances, instance was while I was still marketing myself as the one page business plan guy, I was at an evening workshop at a staple store in downtown Toronto with a business friend of mine. The speaker, was a young woman, likely about 32. And at the time I was pushing 50. <laughs> um, and as soon as we walked in the door, there was the table. That's how I refer to it, the table. The table that had her book on it. Uh, and what was her workshop topic? The power of action planning in small business, something I also espoused to as the one page business guy. I have no idea what she said about action planning that night. I was just remembering how steamed I was that she had a book, was two decades younger than me, and talking about business planning better than I did. And I did say to you all of you at the very beginning, I'm competitive. I was furious with myself. So I swiped the idea of having a book and I wrote chaos, how business leaders can master the power of focus. You can all get a free copy of it. I put it in the text message uh, at chaosthepowerofocus.com. It's entirely free. Um, and I improved it by getting it to being a bestseller on Amazon before everybody else was doing it, right? And we deployed it uh, and, and got our book launch announced, announcement picked up by over 250 affiliates of ABC, NBC, CBS News, and Fox. And it is now my gift to every single new connection I meet in social media. I give it away. I have printed copies, but with COVID, they're sitting up in my garage. Uh, so I haven't been able to give many of them out lately. Um, and so I give away the, the it's not an ebook. It is simply the downloadable version of the book. So now I had instant credibility and instant authority as an author and accomplished it by swiping, improving, and deploying it from a 32-year-old woman that caught me just at the moment that I needed to see what she was doing. The lucid experience number three, well, this growth opportunity took a bit of time to fully come together with two major influences. Again, I said a few minutes ago that when I launched Focus 31, I did so with no marketing capability whatsoever. You'll hear, I've, you can hear I've got kind of a theme here. Like I'm really building the fact that I knew nothing about marketing and it was killing us, right? Well, that had to change. It had to change fast. So I looked up and the universe happened to show me Jerry Robert. Jerry Robert, prior to COVID, was a serious tier two speaker opening on stages around the world for the likes of Tony uh, and Sir Richard. He has generated over $100 million of revenue for his clients and his own business black card books, which is a self publishing book publishing company. And it's actually, he, he was actually the publisher, obviously, of my book. The man was and remains brilliant with his understanding of all things marketing, marketing messaging, and systems. So I made a point to swipe everything he did. I simply surrounded him with me and was a sponge swiping everything I could conceivably discover about how he approached his marketing. And by following, following uh, Jerry and absorbing everything, suddenly I had confidence in my marketing capability. I improved it by making it mine and put it, deployed it back out, 
to present Focus 31 brilliantly into the marketplace so we could show our capability that was our business planning strengths. That was Lucid 3. Lucid 4 is related because after my book was published, Jerry invited me to speak to 100 business owners at a hotel. And I shared the stage with several other speakers. And the only more experienced one than me was Davin Michaels of 123 Employee, a Vegas-based marketing and operations support service provider. During his talk, Davin brought his operations manager onto the big screen live in the room. No big deal, right? Oh, yeah, it was because we were in Toronto and she was freaking in the Philippines. My eyes popped. How cool is this that he can be working, talking to his clients, give tasks, and overnight the tasks can be done and be presented to his clients uh, with, with less than a 24 hour turnaround. I thought this was absolutely amazing and do it far less expensively given the, the, the Philippine labor market. And coincidentally, I knew that Jerry Robert had his book publishing staff in the Philippines too, book production staff, excuse me. So when Jerry's company went through a bit of a regard, I swiped Davin's idea by swiping a few of Jerry's people, one being Ann McAtall, who became our operations manager, plus a web designer and a graphics designer, and while originally I did this for the marketing needs of Focus 31 itself, as I worked with them, I discovered how amazing they were. And we added more staff. And now it's a revenue center for Focus 31, generating about 30% of our revenues from branding, website design, and maintenance, uh, plus social media marketing, offload services, and just to go full circle. This will, this will kill you. To go full circle on this one, I mentioned Jerry Robert Black Card Books publishes self-published books. Well, in 2023, we will publish two books for two of our clients. Steal, swiping Jerry's idea, uh, improve, I won't say improving it because he's really, really good at what he does. We're doing it differently, leveraging our business planning system to enable, to hold the authors accountable to get the work done. And we're putting it back out into the market. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, you know, from a, <laughs> I love all the, 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 the background, you know, from a company that didn't know anything about marketing, we are now generating 30% of our revenues from marketing, from anywhere from branding to book publishing and social media offload, 30% of our revenues. I'm astounded how it all came about. And I, I, again, as I said, it was only last Thursday when I sat back and said, what will I share that this look up, swipe, improve and deploy? We'll, we'll, we'll work for you because it, it's worked for us in, in real time. So I've got one more and I'm going to go quickly because um, I'm going to go full circle one more time. Where did I start? I started with the one page business plan, right? I needed to find a specialty. I found the one page business plan company. I became an affiliate. Okay. I swiped their idea. I made our, our business planning system better than theirs. Um, and now we're going to trademark it. All right. How do I go full circle on that? Well, it was surprisingly easy. Over the winter last year, so Jan I think it was January, mid-January 2022, I was reflecting on how we'd scale up this year. Out of nowhere, I was in the shower with my unconscious mind likes to send me the, these gems of growth. And the name of the one-page business plan popped into my head out of nowhere. I, I hear the universe works in mysterious ways. And I pondered on why that would have happened. And I pondered and I pondered and I pondered and I pondered. And then out of nowhere also came the aha moment. If I started my practice by becoming an affiliate of the one page business plan, wouldn't new business coaches, of which LinkedIn says there are 180,000 in North America with less than three years experience, want to be an affiliate of the Focus Accountability System protocol and have access to an immediate service they could sell. I was certain that they would. And we launched that offer immediately. And it landed flat. It so happens that we overcomplicated. Unlike the one page business plan that was a very simple affiliate relationship, I really had created a franchise model, a model for franchising, which I didn't want to do. 
yet. That's come down the road. So what we are now doing for 2023 is picking up where I was at the beginning of 2022, learning our lesson. We've paired back the license offer to just having access to our leading business planning system, plus the training program, obviously, to learn how to use it. But we are again adding in a secret sauce. And that secret sauce um, will improves the offer by uh, enabling every single licensee to be a co-author of my book by adding, the, all we have to do is add their introduction and their dedicated chapter about what they're passionate about in business into the existing book, put our, change the chapter, uh, change the cover with our names and they will have instant authority, instant credibility as an author as well without going through the pains of having to write an entire book. So those are the five lucid moments that are moments that have lifted Focus 31 to, to a growing concern from a complete hack job in all seriousness. And maybe that is my story. Maybe my story is the fact that I didn't go get a job. Maybe my story was that I was so beaten down that I kept with it. And when I meet business owners on LinkedIn who have got a business and, I, and, the, and I'm celebrating the fact that they've just taken a job, it rips my heart apart because I know what their possibilities are if they would just stay with it and aim high and have a, le a legacy and apply these strategies to their businesses themselves. So I hope to motivate you with look up, swipe, yes. improve, and deploy yourself to achieve Look up, your look up everybody, phenomenal, yes. James. Awesome. You know, Thank our you whole so community much. is enriched. Oh my goodness, lucid strategy. I said, wow, simple and an ordinary average guy you you introduce yourself as an average joe i said average joe we have to look up to you and really uh copy and see what we can learn from you and improve and then deploy i love it everybody uh do connect uh, to james you know he already told you his playground is linkedin 